Game two of the Dallas Edmonton series was wild. We're going to take some time to talk about it in today's video. And I also want to address some of the comments I've gotten recently. It'll be a longer segment, so I'll include it at the end of the video with a timestamp if you want to skip ahead. All right, so the game. This one felt like a must win for Dallas. I said the same thing about the Rangers. You cannot blow your first two at home. They talked on the broadcast. Your chance of winning at that point is like sub 10%. And you really got to give credit to Ottinger because the Oilers came out hot in the first period. Now, admittedly, Dallas actually scored first. Three minutes in, bad pinch. Stan Coven and Ben are going in. Ben shoots. Definitely one you want Skinner to have. However, Connor Brown of all people, would tie it up less than a minute later after picking up his own rebound. Ottinger especially would stand strong for the rest of the period. McDavid had some chances. Edmonton was forechecking really well. The shots were 16-5 to after one. The game-winning goal wouldn't come until three and a half minutes into the third, when Ryan Suter would throw a puck on net, which would get redirected, it would be 2-1 and the offensive Oilers would not be able to respond. I think Oilers fans have to be fairly happy about getting the split in Dallas. After the Vancouver series, a lot of people, especially Vancouver fans, were saying that Dallas was going to steamroll Edmonton. It's clearly not that type of series and it was really a deflection which made the difference. Skinner, however, has continued his little run of greatness, so that's got to feel good. McDavid, however, I mean, he's only got three goals all playoffs. It's just, I wonder if he can break out and get a little more offense going. Although, obviously, he's still driving things with 20 assists. I just, I'd like to see him shoot more. Dallas, the first again, was concerning, but you've got to be happy about how Ottinger can steal a period for you, then your team tightens up in the second and the third. All right, so for the second part of this video, recently I've been getting a lot of feedback and even some frustration about how we, on the Ek Hockey Channel, decide to cover certain games that really out total approach to content. And I want to be clear about one thing. At Ek Hockey, we do not try to be TSN, ESPN, or really, let's be honest, unbiased hockey journalists. That's not what we're going for here. This is my authentic self. The goal of this channel is to basically put my thoughts out into the world, almost like you were talking to a friend who watched the game. If you were to talk to me in real life, I would say the same things that I say in my video, as blunt as I sometimes am, and you don't get that with official media for better or for worse. The other reality of our operation is that Ek Hockey is comprised totally of two people, myself, Justin, and my best friend, Brandon. Together, we split the script writing and the editing, but I also don't say things I disagree with, and if I'm going to say anything controversial, I also run it by Brandon. So really, it's both of our vision. The reality of a two-person team, however, is that we can't do the same thing that Sports Center's 100-plus editors and writers do. We're two people with families. We both have children that we care for during the day. There is only so much hockey we can watch. Like, I often get accused of having an East Coast bias, and I do, but only to the extent that, as Toronto fans know, in Eastern Canada, Edmonton games, for example, will start at 10 p.m. Well, I'm not in Toronto, I'm in Halifax, so tack an extra hour onto that. If an Edmonton game ends in regulation, it very well could be 1, 1 1.30. If it's in overtime, double overtime, we're getting into some really nasty hours. A lot of people were frustrated we didn't cover Game 7, Vancouver, Edmonton, for example, and were saying I didn't do it because I didn't want to give Edmonton their flowers. That could not be further from the truth. I was simply exhausted. The first two rounds took a lot out of Brandon and I. The game ended pretty late. I didn't have the energy to do it that night. And after that, I just figured, let's reset, come back to it in the third round. When the games end late, though, there's always going to be a gap in time. It's just how it is. We're not machines. We've got to get up early with our kids. It's how it is. But I also want to talk a bit more directly to Oilers fans. After the last video, the sort of comments about how much I hate the Oilers and continually hate the Oilers were turned up to 11, which I found incredibly surprising because I've always been very outspoken about the fact that the Oilers are my third favorite team. It's the Rangers clearly above everyone else, then Toronto, then the Oilers. The Oilers are my second most watched team because I love watching McDavid. I've done more Oilers videos than on any other team, including New York. And I just think some of you need to relax. I understand it's the playoffs. Emotions are heightened. I get the same way. But let's just take a breather. Like, the video I did about McDavid being a goon was clearly tongue-in-cheek. McDavid is not a goon. He's the most skilled player in the world. Is he a little loose with his stick sometimes? Sure. But I thought calling him Mick Goon alongside Mick Davo and Mick Spearsy or whatever else I said 
clearly indicated that it was a joke. I think 90% of people got it. The Oilers fans did not. It's fine. I love chirping. Chirp at me a little if you want. I'm going to chirp back. Totally okay. I'm also going to give you my brutal honesty with how I see teams. That doesn't mean I'm biased against them. It just means that I feel a specific way. And if you don't like what I have to say, or if you don't agree with my takes, that's completely fine. There are plenty of other hockey channels. After we made this clip format, many others popped up doing the exact same thing. You can follow one of them. It's totally cool. Most of them also make really good content. Do I make mistakes? Absolutely. People are telling me I may have misrepresented one of McDavid's comments. I promise you, not on purpose. I definitely do not hate the Oilers. I think Stars fans, for example, may have some valid complaints against my coverage of their team because they got even less attention than Edmonton. It's a grind running this channel, running the, my other YouTube channels during the playoffs. It's a grind. I will say there are only a few teams that I hate, like the Devils, for example. That's mostly a Rangers rivalry thing. I don't actually hate the team they have. I don't hate Hughes. I just hate the Devils as an idea. And when I do cover one of those teams, I do try to if anything, overcorrect, because that is where I'm a bit more cognizant about my bias. And I think I was pretty fair, for example, when the Rangers played the Devils last year in the playoffs. But that's all I've got. See ya.